Hey guys, this podcast is going to start from here in my hotel room in San Antonio. Why in San Antonio? Well, uh, I'm getting ready for an interview tomorrow morning with three American former hostages released out of Colombia, rescued out of Colombia, and they decided that their first exclusive interview is going to be granted to me. And um, I'm putting pressure on myself because I want to make them feel so comfortable that they can give us the details and tell us about what they've been through and do justice to their story. So, um, yeah, I probably put more pressure on myself than anybody else. So um, I just want to do justice to their story. I'm fascinated that you guys say that you actually visualize this and that a lot of what you visualized came to pass. We visualized everything people could yeah. visualize. I mean, we how spent we hours. Everything. Just, we would pick yeah. the smallest detail to little pieces. You uh, get good it was, at that in captivity. And you know something? It was fun for us because it took us out of the jungle and put us in the real world where we actually finally are now. Mm -hmm. So we were able to roll over different ideas on how is this thing going to be in the news? Is it going to be quiet? How we get home? Who do you have frequent flyer miles to lend me? Because I don't have any cash right. yeah, to get everything, home. Everything. So, and it was uh, it was fun, and we uh, we always called it fantasy talk. Okay, I go down every list, everything I could buy in an office, yeah. and then I'd fantasize about each piece. You know, roll of tape, anything. Yeah. I'd build houses in my mind, and I get every detail about a house building. That uh, I try to find stuff I didn't know how to do, and visualize how I could build that. How would I do yeah. it? I mean. See how close it might come when we got out to reality of you know my idea. He may yell over to one of us at yeah. nighttime, just out of the blue. Hey, I'm thinking of running this piece of plumbing through this piece of concrete. And I guess if somebody outside was just listening to us, they think these guys we better put them in the jackets and take them away. No, it's a healthy thing. You keep this moving. It's not rotten. Mm -hmm. That's the Did thing. Did you know you to do it. that? Did oh, you yeah. have that kind of training oh, yeah. to, to well, know no, that you should no. keep your first, mind? We, first, we I learned. Was I we was learned as we were, while we were there that uh, we need to put ourselves and what we called our bubble. And it was just a way of adapting to the environment. And yeah. so we kept ourselves, like Tom's saying, making lists, thinking about things, talking about things. All right, so we, we just met the men, and I'm pleasantly surprised at how comfortable I think that they the are. are and uh, we're gonna go just kind of get ready for them and uh, begin the interview. So I wanna tell the world their story. When they told you you were free, tell me about your emotions. It was like a, it was like somebody just released from a tar pit. You cut one arm. I mean, you just suddenly free. You look. It was. I was dazed by it. And the, I, all three, we probably had different reactions. The second thing I thought was, man, I'm in a Russian helicopter. I hope this damn thing doesn't crash because I want to make it through to enjoy this freedom. It's Your voice changed. Yeah. Or you lost it. I mean, it's yeah. if you, you but, just go for a few months without talking. And, and when he say we're, he, we might pass if, and we, hey, real quick, mm -hmm. if we brush by each other, if I'm going to wash a plate, he comes by, we just try to get a little contact, but they separate mm -hmm. us. And you guys can't, they were, no one spoke English there. And we were threatened that if we did speak, they'd separate us even further apart so that we wouldn't even have visual contact. Yeah. And the truth is, we were very worried about that. We wanted to to be able to see each other at the minimum. That was huge to be and able to talk so, and be together. Let me, let's talk about a little bit more about um, some of the remaining hostages families say that they're afraid that the joy and the interest over your story because you've been released will overshadow the plight of their loved ones, the hundreds of people still there. What would you like to say to those families or those hostages? Mark, Mark well, you were talking about that right before one, we started. One thing that, uh, that I know is in my heart is that I won't ever forget those guys. They're like brothers to us. I have no power. The only thing I could do is talk and try to remind people that they are there. Um, and I feel for them. It's almost like a uh, bittersweet feeling that I have because I'm free right now talking to you. But on the other half, my friends are still there and they're suffering right now. Will you forgive these people? Do you hold hate against these people? Do you hold a grudge for what they've done to you? The way I look at what has happened to us is that uh, I don't hate them, but I hate what they do. And they, somebody has to stop them from terrorizing the whole country of Colombia, from victimizing innocent people. 
um, the individuals that are committing these things, I don't hate them because there's always a hope that they can be rehabilitated um, and stop their, their crimes. With those things that they do, yes, I hate those things. They, they, nobody should do that to other people. Never. I, I promised that I would ask you at the end if there was any detail of your story that I did not touch on today that you think, I really want to get this out here. Maybe it's the flag that you're holding. I think that Maybe it's something else. We have a, a plan that we've talked about for years while we were in the jungle. The yeah. day, the time we finally go free, we're going to go on a motorcycle ride across our country. And we've it. named it. It's called the Freedom Ride. Welcome home. Uh, to free great Americans. What, what do you recommend if this comes up again? Do we do anything like, you know, scratch our ear too much? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. How about you guys? The only thing I kept saying was just speak up a little bit, but once you um, got into your stories, you forgot all about the audio level and you were just fine. No, and the advice yeah. to, you, to tell your husband thank you for his advice, it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, I forgot true. about those and, yeah. and it was better. I was less nervous. You, you're all fabulous, but most of all, I mean, it's incredible your mindset, how you were able to keep yourselves busy for five years, and how sharp you are now, even, you know, during this reintegration. I know that this is a lot of stimulation, but you did great. Oh, it's, it's been fantastic. Okay, we just finished the interview, and uh, it went so fast. They did give us 60 minutes, which is a lot more than I thought they would give us. You know, I've made some, some mental notes just about their style of interviewing and that is you know the first 30 minutes we kept talking about the rescue but you got to think about these are men who were in captivity for five years they had all the time in the world to spend talking about stories they they're not used to being hurried along so at the 30 minute mark I really went into overdrive trying to get uh, to the now to their captivity to their plans to their emotions how do you think everything There was just so much new information, new details that we haven't heard about the captivity, about the rescue. Um, this is the first time they've had a, a chance to, to really talk and have questions asked yeah. them. And uh, we're going to have to look at it again to really process uh, all the new information we've learned about yeah. what they went through and the details of, of the rescue and, and, uh, and, their, and their crash. Um, Scott, what didn't we get to ask? I had Scott, I, I had all my note cards, but then I had Scott write down some things to say shout out if at the end we forgot to ask him. Yeah, we wanted to try to see if they could uh, send some message in Spanish. Um, Mark knows Spanish and before he was in captivity, but apparently he learned along the way and they probably, they wanted to send out some message and we ran out of time for that. Long time. Right now, Tamika, we all have to um, get going because now the race starts to get this on the air to field questions and um, the long haul has only begun. All right, so here we go. Okay, so it's, uh, it's 8.42 p.m. We just finished our last live shot of the day. This is our live trucks that we've been using today. I don't know, what is it, like 90 degrees out here? So um, we're gonna go back to our hotel room because we wanna get back here for the morning show and tell more of their story. I gotta tell you, they just drove by former hostages did, said how happy they were with the coverage. I'm just happy that it was a long haul, but we were able to tell their story in a compelling way. But you know what? I, I do have to say that there's a lot more to their story that A, we couldn't get to because of time, B, they couldn't talk about yet, maybe they weren't ready, thinking about what they went through. So all I can say is, you know, keep your ears open. There's a lot more to hear from these three men that we haven't even got to yet. So in the meantime, thanks to all of our crew here who uh, hung out all day. And um, we're just so glad these men are home. So welcome home. And for our podcasters, I know it was a little bit different, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning on the show.